Octopath Traveler 1 sucks now because the sequel outshines the original in almost every single way. Immediately, the most obvious improvement the sequel has over the original is its presentation. The title screen alone proves my point. The art style in the original was already amazing to look at, but here in the sequel, it's just even better. Look at the pathways in the original. Now look at the sequels. I think it's pretty obvious, right? The world is more believable, natural, immersive, gorgeous. Each location is more detailed. You can often find unique or breathtaking landmarks. Ooh. This is pretty cool. I really like this area a lot. There's just so much stunning scenery found in this game. And this extends to the towns as well. Towns look so much better. And now we're inside. Camel. It is like... So many little things here. How did they make a simple forest village look this good? I cannot fathom how they were able to one-up themselves, but they did. And in the towns, NPCs actually move. It's so cool. It's such a minor thing, but it adds so much to the immersion. Even among those that are stationary, they're not just standing around. Some are actually sitting or even performing to a crowd of people. It's honestly amazing. Where is he going? I shall stalk my prey. And like the regions and the towns, the dungeons also have seen a massive improvement in terms of theming and visual quality. Going back to the original game, a lot of these dungeons are unremarkable. More often than not, they kind of just feel like a different version of another one you've been through. I cannot tell you which forest dungeon this is. Meanwhile, Octopath Traveler 2 has a cemetery, a factory, an abandoned church, a garden, mines, a shipwreck. What? It's already better than manor, cave, forest. And uh, I guess that's really it, huh? I cannot stress this enough. The theming is top notch. The scenery is stunning. And there are a bunch of little details hiding around that is just so fun to notice and point out. By comparison, the sequel makes the original look flat. I don't want to be too harsh to the original, but after everything I just mentioned, it's hard not to feel that way. Though, if I'm going to be honest, I do miss the sparkle that was in the sand and the snow, but the overall visual improvements in almost every other department more than makes up for that missing quality. Even the presentation of battles got an upgrade from the way the camera swings as you unleash a powerful attack, to the improved attack animations of enemies and your party. The boss animations are definitely the star of the show, but the skill animations are just as impressive. Die. I missed! The gameplay has seen some refinement. At its core, it's still the same as the original. Path actions, the freedom, the break and boost system, it's all here. But now each character has two path actions. No longer do you have to worry about whether or not you have the right path action available because of your current party. You most likely have one that is usable in your current situation. And they're not just copies of each other. Some of these path actions provide extra effects such as how Hikari learns new skills from the NPCs he challenges, or how Agnes dances will summon an NPC to provide extra support. The job system makes a return, only this time they've been rebalanced. While some skills have carried over from the original, like Bewildering Grace. Aww. <laughs> Most skills, however, were either tweaked or replaced with brand new ones. Then there are two new additions to the combat system, that being the latent abilities and the EX skills. I really like these additions because they add individuality to the characters besides their base job and stats. This is what it means to be a star! I won't be afraid. Here you go. Got Watch if you're too bad. What to do? Thanks. But I won't lie. I'm over the random encounters. I can still tolerate it, I have the patience after all. But after recently playing both the original and this game for a grand total of a lot, yeah, it's starting to get to me. Evasive maneuvers is still my best friend, and being able to speed up combat is a welcome addition. But honestly, I kinda just wanna start seeing overworld enemies. Also, allowing some way to share XP with the travelers not currently in your party would have been helpful in managing their levels. Now, still don't believe you need to grind just to overcome any challenges the game throws at your way. I brought a level 19 Particio to a level 35 boss, and none of my party members during that fight were at the recommended level. And I still won! That number is just a suggestion! And why can't I change my party from the menu? You let me do it during and after the final chapter. I love this game's soundtrack. Where do I even begin? The battle themes and the boss themes are all just amazing. The character themes are overall better than the original. 
I think. Still working on that opinion, but it's hard to deny just how good some of them are, such as Particios and Hikaris and Agnes theme. Oh my god. I just love many of the towns and area themes. Wall Grove manages to make me smile every time I hear it. New Delsta just oozes that metropolitan vibe. Then there's the Harborlands, the Leaflands, Totohaha. There's a lot of melancholic songs that I just love listening to that really just hit you in the feels in those emotional moments. I could honestly keep going. Going, but I feel like I'd just be reading the entire soundtrack lineup. I think the standouts for me are the character pre-boss themes. In the original, I only had one clear favorite, and that was Tressa's prelude theme. But in this game, I just cannot legitimately decide which my ones are my favorite. Hikari's, Particios, Agnes, Ochets, Casties. God damn, I'm like listing all of them. I was gonna say, <laughs> how dare you make good music. Yasunori Nishiki might just be one of my favorite video game composers now. I will play any game with this man's name attached to it. And now that begs the question, do I like this more than the original? No, they're both equally amazing. I'm not gonna put one above the other. A lot of the tracks in the original are iconic and the sequel just came out, okay? Initially, I had my doubts about whether or not I enjoyed this soundtrack as much as the first game. But the more I listened, the more I fell in love. For now, they're tied. Oh yeah, the sound design is still amazing. No sand. Sand. This minor little stream of sand has a sound effect. Who does this? Now let's talk about the big thing that everybody criticized the original game for, the story. The original eight stories were simple and isolated, with each of the chapters scattered around the world, giving you that freedom to choose the order in which to complete them. And I enjoyed the simple stories for what they were. I mean, it was all I can expect from a game that gives you eight different stories. And what was cool was basically learning that ninth plot thread that loosely tied all of them together. Although it could have been executed better, you know, maybe hiding it behind a side quest wasn't the brightest idea. For what it managed to do, it was good enough. But I get that not everybody feels the same way. I understand that not everybody enjoyed the stories and this style of disconnected storytelling. So with all of that said, how exactly did the sequel address these issues? The individual stories are far more entertaining and intriguing than they were in the original. And there are far more chapters scattered around the world than before. The sheer amount of options to choose from is almost overwhelming. I found myself to be invested in each story. Some of them had surprising revelations, some had tragic moments, some were pretty alright, and others were just fun to experience. They also included scenarios when you first meet the travelers, which is a nice touch. And as a bonus, they also allow you to skip their entire first chapter. You could just pick them up and go. There's also the addition of these crossed path chapters that help to satisfy that desire for more party interaction. Though they're only limited to that specific pair, you're not gonna get any funky combinations. But the biggest addition that they made to this game was that of a final chapter. This, this right here, was missing from the first game. Something to bring the whole adventure to a conclusion. Every traveler participates in this last chapter. And while I'm not gonna go too into spoilers, I will say that that first cutscene that plays just made me realize what was missing. It was so nice to see all of them talk to each other. Like, I, I just wanted to see more. I needed more. If you didn't like the disconnected storytelling from the original, you're not gonna like it here either. But the stories are more enjoyable this time. Like, like come on, this game gives you eight stories. Like, there has to be at least one you find entertaining. Oh god. <laughs> that is some damage. Bro, what game am I playing? How can I not talk about the bosses? They are still the best part about the game. The buildup of tension before the fight and the quality of the sprites are the same as it was in the original. Perfect. Well, that's what I thought, but it turns out it was missing one thing. Animation. Wow, it's such a simple thing to add that I cannot believe I never thought about it before. But its inclusion gives their strongest moves that feeling of weight and severity. They're intimidating and they look cool as hell. Yes, yes, no, yes. no, 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 no! Oh wait, it wasn't actually that bad. Bro, please, just let me win. <laughs> Let's take a guess. Okay. Okay. 
It seems they're more challenging this time around, often employing some kind of gimmick to make things more interesting. The original did this as well by doing things like blocking some of their weaknesses or by increasing the amount of shield points. But some of the things they pulled, especially in the later chapters, left me speechless. Left me flabbergasted. I'm looking at you specifically, but I welcome the challenge. It's a good way to see just how much damage I can pull off. Oh, that's damn. A thousand. That's what I like to see. Oh, oh no, right. now we start this. Bye, script. Ooh. That's not fair. Are you serious? Oh my god, why did she have so many actions? Ah, oh, stop, don't kill her. What you what the? What was that? Look at that. Do you see it? The backgrounds. I can't believe I never noticed them until now, but they are stunning. There's no contest. They completely demolished the original because in the original, they reused the same ones. They're fine, but come on. When was the last time you were either impressed or had your attention drawn towards them? Pay to win? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll say it again. Wait a minute, I can use this? If there's anything I look forward to the most in this game, it has to be the bosses. Ooh, damage. I need this boss to do something, because I'm kind of rolling him right now. It's unyielding. The Thunder Blade. Yes. It's over. Jesus Christ, I hate this stupid ass boss. This is truly a great game. The stories are better. The My gameplay blade. is still satisfying. The music is still gorgeous. And the overall presentation has seen a massive upgrade. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this game, and it sort of just confirmed this idea that I had for a while now. And it's that Octopath Traveler, the original, feels like an incomplete game. And while the experience was overall solid, it was clearly lacking in some areas. This sequel proves it. Octopath Traveler 1 set the foundation. Octopath Traveler 2 took the foundation and refined it. This is an easy recommendation to anyone who played the original, or to people looking into a chill RPG to play. If you didn't like the original, chances are you probably won't like this one either, especially if the criticisms you have were more on the foundational level. Whenever I think about my experience with the game so far, I just can't help but smile. It's just making me want to replay it already. Honestly, I think I fell in love all over again. God. What do they normally say? Look at me guys, I'm the bad guy. We got here. Huh? Like, damn, this really does feel like the song. Did you die? We're going home now. <laughs> 10k from above? Again? How to decipher unknown languages. What am I gonna need that one for? Dude, you may not see it right now, but I'm like grinning. That's a dead person. It's so creepy. I don't get it. Hello? Ah, I messed it up. No, my circle. They're snowmen! <laughs> okay. Let me have a moment to enjoy something before you interrupt me, game. <laughs>